Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you the basics of creating a shape using the Shape Builder tool, which is a very easy and convenient way of organizing shapes together. So I'm just going to go to File, New to create a new document. Let's call this one Shape Builder. And this time I'm going to use print for the profile and I'll make an A4 page. Let's make it in landscape orientation, not portrait. And I'll just click OK. So there we go. Now, unlike in the previous tutorial where we spoke about the title safe and action safe areas, as this is an A4 page, which is displayed with an A4 page. So the first thing I'm going to do is using the ellipse tool, I'm just going to create a circle. Now I'm going to constrain the proportions by holding down shift. So as you see, the shape is the same size. If I let go of shift, the shape is more of an oval, but I want it to be a perfect circle. So I'll hold down shift. There we go. What I'm going to do now is create two more circles. I shall uh, create one, let's see, around here. Now I'm going to hold down Alt this time to draw out from the center. So rather than going from the top corner, if you hold down Alt, you can draw out from the center. And I'll hold Shift so that I can constrain the proportions once again. Now using my selection tool, I'm just going to Alter this slightly, so I'm holding down Shift. Let's do Shift and Alt. And now to do Shift this time. I want that to be in the center. There we go. Now let's move it along a little bit that way. So these guides are showing me that's in the center now. Perfect. Now again with the Selection tool still held down, if I want to quickly duplicate a circle or duplicate any object, if you hold down the Alt key and then drag a shape or drag an object, you'll see it duplicates it. So there we go. That's duplicated that circle. I now have this object here with multiple circles inside. I'm going to go back to my ellipse tool. I'm just going to create another circle up here. Again, holding down Alt and Shift. Let's place that circle there. And then using the selection tool, I'm going to hold down Alt to duplicate that circle again. And I'll place this one here. There we go. So now I have a shape which is made of a series of circles. It doesn't look like much yet, but uh, we're going to change that shortly. In fact, let me just change this slightly. I'm going to put it in the middle of these two ellipses here. There we go. This isn't a shape I've drawn before, so uh, I'm hoping this looks right. Right, so to use the Shape Builder tool, which is the purpose of this tutorial, you can basically combine objects. So first of all, you need the selection tool to actually select the objects in question. And you can then use the Shape Builder tool in a variety of different ways. As you can see, my cursor has a little plus icon next to it. So if I drag a line between these two parts of the shape, those shapes will be joined. If I undo that, I can also choose to remove shapes by holding down Alt and I'll get the minus symbol like so. So if I remove that object, you'll see it's removed it. You can't really tell at the moment because there's a transparent uh, layer behind. Let me just draw a black shape just to emphasize that point. I'll change the order of the layers just so you can see what I mean. Let's give that shape a fill. There we go. So as you can see, because I've removed that circle beneath, that's now transparent so you can see through it. I'm just going to undo all that, Command-Z or Control-Z on a PC. One more. There we go. I can tell that shape now exists again because I can select it. I couldn't select it a moment ago. So, as I mentioned before, select the entire object. Use the Shape Builder tool to draw the links between shapes, like so. And there we go. We have a very basic yin and yang symbol. Whoops. Created very easily. I've got all my objects selected. Select one object at a time to fill it, not multiple objects like I just done there. There we go. 